So now we are going to talk about multivariate qualitative thematic maps. This is showing us that the same symbol shows more than one attribute, and it can combine several graphic elements such as shape, orientation, or hue. So again, we're using one or a combination of these point features, whether it's a point, line, or area. This is an example of a multivariate qualitative thematic map. Here it's showing us different colored polygons to show us the national park versus the national forest. Also, we could see the line features here, which are red, showing us the boundaries. And we could also see point features that are showing us what, where is a specific amenity is located here on this map. Here, this is another multivariate qualitative thematic map. It's showing us the shellfish type as well as the bottom type. Next, we will be talking about quantitative thematic maps when we want to know what and where, but also how much of something exists at some location. So we're looking at the volume of a feature. So here we could see um, the qualitative column and the quantitative column. So Again, we just went over the qualitative features of the point, the line, and the area. Whereas for quantitative, we could see the volume of the point features. We could see small and large circles. We could see an arrow representing a line feature for quantitative maps. And then for area, we could see the different sized polygons and we could also look at volume. So for mapping point features for quantitative maps, we could see dot maps and proportional symbols. But first, let's review dot maps. So dot distribution maps, they can be classified by, for example, one dot equals one entity or phenomenon or one dot can equal more than one entity or phenomenon. So what's commonly used for dot distribution maps are population density. So for example, one dot could equal 10,000 people. Uh, so for one million population, how many dots shall we have? So the advantages is that this type of map is easy to produce and understand as well as seeing the density and this has good data recovery. The disadvantages are map interpretation is not one-to-one. -one. Also present day software does not include satisfactory approaches for dot placement. ArcGIS displays it randomly. So for example, if I have four states within a country and we tend to see the population density in reality be um, densely populated here on the bottom side of the state, GIS instead will place it randomly. So again, GIS will distribute it randomly within a state rather than showing the accurate representation of it being dense in a small corner of the state. So that is one disadvantage of um, the dot distribution maps. So here we have a dot distribution map. If I could zoom in based on the loss of 153 persons and the gains of 156 persons. So again, red, it's the gain of the population, whereas the black dots are the loss of the population. 
And then here, this is a dot density map based on women between 15 and 39 year olds. In this example, one dot equals 20 persons. And so we could see the distribution of the dot density map based on those different themes. Here, this is one of the earliest maps created. This is a map of cholera distribution in United Kingdom. And again, you can see that there is a dot density map. The single dot is showing us deaths from cholera and the X is showing us the specific pump locations. So John Snow mapped cholera, mapped this cholera outbreak in London in 1854. Here is another population density map. We could see this is showing us the 1990 population distribution in the United States and one dot equals 7,500 people. So we can see where our population is more dense in the region compared to another side of the United States. Also, uh, next I want to talk about the proportional symbols, geometric or pictograph. So for proportional symbol maps, this process scales the symbols on the map in proportion to the magnitude of the data occurring at point locations. You can use geometric shapes or pictographs. The advantages are that it could be simple, easy data recovery. We could also use multiple data sets. The disadvantages are perception, design concerns, and also it's time consuming. So we're gonna look at examples of proportional symbol maps and how the design can be a little bit, um, that the design doesn't really look that nice, like we could see here in this map. So this is, again, an example of the proportional symbol maps. Here we're looking at Oklahoma as our base map and the number of reported tornadoes from 1950 to 1991. And we can see here that a larger circle shows means that there is a higher number of tornado occurrences from 65 to 69 compared to a lower number of tornado occurrences, which is represented by a small circle. And we can see it's from seven to six, seven to 18. So again, this is the range of the tornado categories based on their occurrences. And we can see that for design purposes, um, here is a small circle overlaid on top of the larger circle. So again, the design is not that good. It's hard to see. Also here we have um, another proportional symbol map. This is the California County population in 2000. And we can see that a large box represents 9 million population, whereas a small box represents 10,000. So based on this map, we can see that Northern California has a lower population count compared to Southern California. Also, we could see here in Central California in the Bay Area that these boxes are overlaid upon one another. So it's kind of difficult to see, to see a, a good visual representation of the population in this area of California. Here is the percent of population from 18 to 60 years old in 2000. So again, this is showing us that the higher the percentage of the population, the larger the person. And here we're looking at microbreweries and brew pubs in 1996. So again, 
the point feature is represented as a beer mug. So you could use any type of symbology for your point feature. So the higher number of establishments, the larger the beer mug. Compared to the smaller number of, of establishments, the smaller the beer mug. Here is the distribution of cow sales in Maryland in 1997 um, by the county. And again, the design is not necessarily good. We could see that these cows are overlaid upon one another. And it doesn't have a good visual representation of the number of cows sold. And these are the differences between a dot density map dot density map and a proportional symbol map. So again, these are showing us here. Like I said, one dot equals 20 persons, whereas here we're looking at the tornado count. So also for quantitative map types, we could look at mapping line features and these types of maps are called flow maps. Flow maps, you use variations in line width or color to show the direction and amount of movement, as well as the types of goods or services moved. So the advantages of flow maps is that flow maps is that they reduce visual clutter and they show us the movement. And the disadvantages are possible over generalization.